displays. And what you get is a, a community that understands a principle of its cohesion is that you look after others uh, before you look after yourself, that your care extends to all members of your community and that you are always vigilant to people in your community who are doing it tough for whatever reason. It might be during ordinary times that silent minority of people who are just doing it tough or it might be in the aftermath of an emergency where plainly you can see victims wherever you look around. And it's a community that says we can't tolerate injustice or need while we have power. That's to me, embody, that, that embodies a community which expresses its sense of compassion and social justice to each other. Definitely. So all members of the community are encouraged to participate in acts of kindness. Do you think that this concept of helping others or deliberately setting out to do something without thanks or return favours closely linked to the idea of the Anzac legend and this sort of helping each other out is part of the Australian spirit as well? Look, I think the way I would put it is that while we prize all of those uh, generosity of spirit uh, uh, actions, we love, we love to associate them with Anzac. They really are national characteristics. And the way I use it is a more modern term, paying it forward. Uh, presently, we're, we're in the fortunate position of having energy and resources, uh, and you couple those with a sense of compassion and you go find somebody who is in need. You go find them and you help them. And that's sort of paying it forward because what you're doing is saying, this is not for any feedback to me. I don't get I don't get return. The return I get is that those people are now more uh, capable members of the community because I was able to help them. Yeah. Thank you. Could you share an anecdote about the Catholic school that has contributed to your part in life as the ambassador? Yeah. Well, the African Catholic Education Week. Inevitably, your mind turns to your own schooling. And I sort of uh, saw Waverley College through a different prison as I was there and then later. But now I look back and I see that the choice my parents made to send me to a school which had uh, a great sense of community, great values, was hugely important in uh, forming me as a person. Next to your family, it's your school that gives you a sense of those community values which are important in your later life. Um, now, I happen to be at a good school uh, and most schools strive for that. That's one of the benchmarks of a decent school that they uh, are able to incorporate a sense of community. Uh, now I'm the Chancellor of the Catholic University, I see that as, if you like, as a, a school for older people. And I happen to be the sort of, uh, in one of the leadership positions there. And I want the university to embody values and a sense of community and to exhibit at every hand what I call a generosity of spirit. Uh, it's called a Catholic University, but we have the most diverse group of students you'd ever want to see. They come from many overseas countries, from many religions, and some may not, may even not profess a belief in a deity. But they're all included, and they're all treated uh, with a set of values that, as Catholics, we are for. Yeah. I think some of my mates would have said the first principle would have been does the school play rugby? <laughs> but actually what we wanted again was to know from a variety of people whose judgment we trusted was that the schools that we might send our kids to uh, were well run, uh, had a good uh, culture, uh, embodied hard work because it's not just a holiday camp, it's a learning area for youngsters, and, and that uh, it was a, an inclusive school where uh, as much as people like to conform, individualism was both tolerated and promoted. Yeah, definitely. So when you entered the Australian Defence Force, did you ever imagine that you would be 
imagine that you would be someone who a lot of people looked up to as an inspiration. Like, I know my dad doesn't like reading books at all, but he's very doable just because he asks me on so many things I can relate to on an everyday basis. So, how do you think um, you feel that with the thanks to your family, your Catholic beliefs, or is that the combination of all those things? It's very hard when you're asked a question about uh, your own development to see it clearly. But if there's one thing when I look in the mirror, I hope I see it is somebody who is grounded. Uh, we're all very ordinary people. Sometimes we're given extraordinary profile or responsibilities. But uh, you are a poor, fragile, uh, imperfect being doing your best. Now, the key ingredient is do your best. Uh, don't be overwhelmed by problems. Don't say, oh, oh that's beyond me. Uh, it might be, but let your efforts show that. Try. So, uh, I've always thought if I'm grounded and go out to say I'm going to do my best, then um, I've got a better chance than if I um, think everything is easy or that everything is too hard. Frequently, even the worst problems respond to constant effort. Yeah, so true. So now, at the end of the year, I'm going to Cambodia to help teach orphans English, and obviously you played a huge role in East Timor development, and I loved how, when you were speaking in the church before, how you mentioned that it wasn't all about signing papers, it was about being with people and seeing them develop their own sense of spirit. Do you think that, what advice would you give to Australians overseas, or to me as well, please? about helping people develop their own spirit and helping them create something for themselves that they can be proud of and that can't be broken down? I think the main thing for Aussies uh, who uh, go overseas to help uh, communities that are needy is to remember that while you might be fixing things or bolstering institutions, everything you do is for another human being with a dignity and a spirit and aspirations which presently cannot be met whether that's in education or health or lifespan or, or a job opportunity whatever you're doing you are relating to a person cool. so just one last question it's obviously a very busy retirement and I was just wondering how did you plan to celebrate your birthday next week <laughs> That's in the hands of my wife. I've definitely ruled out uh, surprise parties. Uh, because I, uh, uh, as a military man, you become uh, very contingency aware. So you're always on the lookout for surprises. And I have to say, military guys don't really like surprises. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I've said to the, my wife, if it was possible for our boys and, and our daughter-in-law all together, that would be perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much. And, um, Can I just say, while you're still recording, it's wonderful to see one of my favourite families in the far north <laughs> together. I'm sorry that a couple of them are not around today, but you give them my love and tell them that uh, those days of uh, a couple of years ago uh, seemed like just yesterday to me. The only thing that shows me that it wasn't just yesterday is how mature and uh, uh, beautiful <laughs> the young ladies remain about how mature they're getting. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, your presence really has meant the world to family. We still look on those photos. Yeah. And everyone still talks about you, so you should be very proud of what you're doing yourself. Yeah, magnificent yeah. Mike. <laughs> the great Gordon Vale gang. Oh, and also, I don't know if you're interested, but whenever I go to the office, you'll remember, I don't know if you remember, but you donated that picture for us. Oh, yeah, really yeah. Lovely. And it's there in our office. Am I in mind. my cyclone rig or my military uniform? I can't remember. You're in your military uniform. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. I did, uh, the only time I've worn my uniform since I retired was actually at the debutantes ball in Innisfar. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because the young ladies and their partners were getting all dressed up, uh, and it was not long after the cyclone, mm -hmm. I thought, what can I do just to be a bit out of the ordinary? So I phoned up the head of the army and said, Listen, I don't normally put my uniform on, mm. but I want to put it on for the debutante sport. And he said, oh, because uh, I used to be his boss. Mm. So he said, yeah, please do that. And I wore it and it was all right. Mm. Mm. And you know, it fits again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>